and welcome to another episode of Bookish and Bewildered. It was recently my birthday and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who left me well wishes and kind messages on my Twitter. It's very much appreciated and it really made my day. I also wanted to say a huge thank you for helping me hit 100 subscribers on my channel. It was the best birthday present ever and thank you so much for helping me hit that milestone. As you might have noticed, I am by the fire. We've lit the fire finally because it's rollicking bollocking freezing in England at the moment. And I'm getting it a little bit cozy with a few minor Christmas decorations. Nothing too jarring because it is just like mid to end November and I'm more of an autumnal Halloween girl and I don't want to sort of get too into the whole Christmas thing just yet. So loving the fireplace though and it's giving the cottage a bit more of a cozy you know cottage core glow to it so I'm very much appreciating the vibes when we come in from a hard day of work fresh off the train from London stick on the fire cuddle up by the TV or with a good book and a nice glass of wine so loving that. So my birthday <laughs> I had a really great day and I wanted to show you the little book haul that I got for my birthday. My boyfriend very kindly bought my shopping list at the Oxfam Bookshop as one of my presents and I thought it might be nice to share them with you. The Suicide Shop by Jean Toul, I think. The basic premise of this book is that there is a family who run a shop and the shop basically gives the customers options on how to commit suicide which is a little bit taboo quite frankly <laughs> so that was an unusual premise to start with and it caught my attention um, what's interesting is that the family has run the shop for generations it's what they do they're kind of depressive they're a little bit like a whole family of Eeyores quite sad and um, obviously this is the family business so that might be why and then the youngest member of the family falls in love and there is a little bit of hope that blossoms in his heart and that radiates throughout the family and throughout the business and we find out how that affects the suicide shop infernal devices by kw jetta the story starts with george dower who is a proper victorian gentleman and um, a mysterious creature visits him and asks him to fix something that his father, who is a crazy inventor, made. And it's all to do with um, saving mankind from a terrible fate. So there's a lot of, of um, crazy adventures going on within this book. And it just sounded like a lot of fun. And I wanted to kind of read it next to the fire on a winter's evening with a nice glass of wine. So that's the idea behind this item on my wish list. Amnesia. This is a point horror book. I love the cover. Why is it that point horror and pulp horror did fabulous covers of books? They might have been on the nose regarding what the book's about, but that's what I want from my horror novel. We want proper horror covers to our books, something that you can feel proud of when you're sitting on the underground and people judge you for what you read. I want to be judged for the <laughs> some decently scary looking book covers. Anywho, Amnesia by Sinclair Smith. This is a point horror book and it's about a young woman who wakes up in the hospital and she has no recollection how she got there. She doesn't even recognize her own face. She gets picked up by her sister and to, to, to go home and she starts to suspect that the sister might be hiding something. And so, obviously judging by the cover, this is going to be quite an interesting <coughs> book to tuck into. We shall see. Once Upon a Dream. Now, the reason why this was on my wish list at Oxfam is that it's a uh, sort of like a fairy tale retelling. So obviously it's about Sleeping Beauty and the book starts with the dragon being defeated and the prince coming to kiss Aurora on the lips and, and wake her from her slumber when um, instead the prince falls asleep and joins the rest of the castle in the sleeping curse. The actual story goes from there, which is um, surrounding Aurora 
and her battle with Maleficent in the dream world and that is what this book is about so that is going to be on my nightstand. Next up is Maxwell's Demon. I'm trying not to let it kind of catch the light too much because it's a bit strobe and weird. So, love that cover though. I mean, take a look at that. Pretty gorgeous. Maxwell's Demon is a freewheeling investigation into the magic power locked inside the alphabet. Love through the looking glass, the bond between parents and children, and at its heart, the quest for meaning in a chaotic and untidy world. Quite. It's described as dazzlingly clever, wickedly playful, devastatingly poignant by M.R. Carey. Ooh. I got some other books from um, friends and family and these are separate to the Oxfam wish list that I have. How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. It's quite a provocative cover, I think you'll agree. This story is about a young woman who murders seven members of her family but she's arrested for a murder that she did not actually commit. And she seems to be, from what little I know of the book, a sociopath or a psychopath. I think she would be classed as a psychopath because she actually did kill people for it. Anyway, this does give me Kind Hearts and Coronets vibes. I do love the pink pages. And I love the cover. I also was gifted a signed copy of Certain Dark Things and it does give me Blade Runner vibes, the cover. This book is about a sort of dystopian world where there are vampires in Mexico and they are banned from certain areas. They have genetically enhanced pets such as this dog up here who has glow-in-the-dark tattoos and they're genetically enhanced to be quite huge. So, love that. I mean, if I could do that with my gerbils, they'd be massive. But yeah, that sounds like quite a lot of fun. Bits of a distraction, so when it's rainy and miserable outside, this is gonna be my go-to. And as I said, it's also signed by the author. So, that's an extra little birthday treat. Love. Bit of a controversial read up next, which is The Maidens. Now, some people love this book, some people not so much. So I'm curious where I'm going to fall on the scale of love it or hate it, or maybe I'll be in the middle, I don't know. But this is a dark academia novel, um, a murder is committed and um, a psychiatrist is trying to unravel who committed the murder and that's basically all I know. I know that there's a, a university or some kind of college where there is a group of girls who are known as the Maidens. I'm a bit nervous actually. This is probably the book I'm most nervous about reading. I was also kindly gifted a couple of items such as this gorgeous Dipti candle. It smells really quite strongly of rose. It's supposed to be like a berry candle but it smells just like sticking your face in a bouquet of roses, red roses. Speaking of candles, I was also given kind of unusual presents, which is a couple of bleeding vampire candles, but it kind of drips red candle wax and um, it looks like it's bleeding. So that's kind of fun. It's very in on brand if you're reading Edgar Allan Poe or something gothic like Dracula and you've got your bleeding vampire candles going in the background. I was also gifted some spell stones with their own little bag and a helpful how-to. And I now have <laughs> quite an extensive reading list to be getting along with and I got every single book that I wanted for my birthday. I had a great day, I had a great time and I'm just really grateful. <laughs> you guys are amazing and thank you very much for hanging out with me. You don't have to be here and I do appreciate it so I will see you soon my lovelies. Stay safe and be good or at least try, you know, you might, you might like it, you might.